something that you want to post to um, Class Dojo or Facebook. Well, Class Dojo is probably fine, but um, not to Facebook or anything like that where um, somebody from another state could come and access that information. And the password for NC Wise Owl is Wise Owl 19. I'm going to type it in the chat box just so that everybody can see what it looks like. Um, it's the same password that we used last year. So if you did use um, NC Wise Owl with students and um, you know they're familiar with that, you can go ahead and use use that password this year as well. They're trying to um, simplify and, and keep things um, less complicated for us. So you can access NC Wise Owl through the uh, app launcher on your desktop if you are um, in a school building and if you're in the school building, it should go ahead and pull up. You don't actually need to enter a password. But anybody, if you're accessing from home or all, any of your students, they're going to need that password in order to um, access the databases. So I am going to go ahead and share my screen so that you can um, see me as I walk through some of the databases. Let's see. Alrighty, and um, Candy, can you are you able to see my screen, or Kathy, somebody? I can't. You probably better luck with Kathy. Okay. That or if somebody wants to pop in the chat. Uh -oh. Susan, Crystal, I can see it. Some people okay. can, some people can't. Okay. Kathy, did you say a good um, thing to try for that is to go to the spotlight view? You may want to click the three dots, the more options, and um, under change layout, change to spotlight and see if that works. If not, I had to leave the meeting and join again, and then things worked a little bit better. Okay. Well, and I do see some people can see it. So yeah, hopefully if you're having issues, you can um, try that workaround and hopefully you'll be able to, to view it. Alrighty, so this is what it looks like when it comes up. Again, you can use that app launcher or um, if you were at a uh, different computer at your house or students can just type in ncwiseowl.org up here at the top, all lowercase letters, um, no spaces. So this is the home screen that comes up. You can see that you can, um, browse by different um, topics. So the ones that I use the most are the subject search or um, just the, the level of school that you are at. I find this to be the most helpful. Um, that way you're not um, you know, browsing through resources that aren't really applicable. So we're gonna start here with elementary. Um, I do have databases that we're gonna look through for each level. And a lot of these, they are the same um, databases, but just geared towards different levels. So for example, the first one that we're looking at, Britannica School, we're going to look at the elementary version, but the middle and high school versions um, are really, really similar. So you should be able to, to use these same tools for those as well. So the home screen um, has this nice um, carousel at the top where um, there's different popular topics that kids are interested in. These um, change every so often but they usually always have this animal um, section that is really popular with students. And then down here, there's some other um, options as well if you want to jump to any of those topics. But we're gonna come up here to the search bar and I'm gonna look at articles on the solar system. So the articles come up based on relevance. So the most relevant topics are at the top, um, but you can kind of see if we were looking for information on Mars, for example, that also shows up in our solar system search. We're going to go back up to the top and off to the side. You'll notice um, you can also look at different um, formats for the topic. So if you were looking specifically for images or videos, um, you could go to those. Um, I will uh, mention that these are not necessarily um, it's not a perfect search system. You'll see there's lots of different videos on the digestive system as well. Um, so just kind of be aware of that if you're if you're kind of sending students in that um, you want to make sure they're finding videos that are relevant to the topic that you're looking at. Uh, but we're going to come up here to 
articles and we're going to choose our top result and you'll see it starts out with the introduction um, so the introduction has this orange bar lit up and then down here are the different subtopics. Um, you can kind of think of these as the different chapters in, in like a nonfiction book. So if you wanted information specifically about the sun, we would click on that and um, students could read the information that it has about the sun. Uh, I do think if you're um, working with younger students, make sure you explain to them about these arrows because that's something that um, isn't necessarily intuitive for the little ones. But it's got some really neat features um, within Britannica, which I like. You'll see there's different um, words highlighted that connect to different articles, kind of like if you're using Wikipedia, um, the same idea. It has a dictionary built in. So if you double click on a word, the English and Spanish um, version or of the definition pops up. So it's really easy for students to, to look up any words that they're unfamiliar with. It also has, I wonder if I can, there we go. It also has a read aloud feature. So again, if you're working with younger the students. the system is a star called the sun. It is the largest object in the solar system. They can actually play so that it reads aloud. So if they, um, you know, are having trouble reading some of the vocabulary or understanding, they can have that read aloud option to make it a little bit easier um, for them to comprehend. If you look off to the right hand side, um, these are different options that you have for um, adjusting the articles and then sharing the articles. So you are able to create an account um, if you would like. If you do that, you can save um, articles to your favorites for easier reference later on. Obviously, you can print, email. The citation tool is something that I like to point out um, to students whenever I'm using Britannica with them because it automatically provides the citation um, for them. So, you know, for example, if I'm working with second graders, um, I don't expect them to create their own citation, but it is nice to um, have the conversation with them about um, digital citizenship and making sure that we provide attribution to uh, authors and sharing where we got the information from. So I, I think that's a handy little tool and just um, good to get them in the, the habit of um, looking for citation information when they are um, providing research and conducting research. So accessibility wise, it does allow you to um, increase and decrease the font sizes. And it also has a translation tool, which is pretty handy. So you can choose the language that you would like it to translate into. So I'm going to come down here and translate it into Spanish. And you'll see now our all of our articles and information is now in Spanish. And if we wanted to change it back, it's really easy. All you have to do is come up here and show original and it switches back pretty seamlessly. So there's also an option for um, browsing lesson plans within Britannica. So if you haven't used um, something like this before and you're kind of trying to figure out how you're going to use it within your um, lessons, you can come here and see some ideas from other, other teachers. So I'm going to see, I'm going to search for third through fifth grade lessons and Let's limit it to history and click on refresh. And you'll see here are some ideas from um, other users of lesson plans that they've used. So um, just a disclaimer with this though, the like all of the content and information obviously was created by um, content experts and um, you know verified by librarians. And so you can you can trust that that information is reliable. The information on the lesson plans, this is all submitted by users. So, um, you know, just kind of think something to keep in mind, just because it says that it's um, meeting certain standards. Obviously, you want to use your own judgment um, when you're borrowing ideas. But I do think it's helpful just to kind of go in and see the ideas for types of assignments that um, teachers have uh, given to students using these articles. So I wanted to point that out. But that, let's see, 
Yep, that is the overview of Britannica. Um, so I'll pause there. Candy, are there any questions about Britannica or NC Wise Owl in general, general before moving forward? I have nothing on the form, so you're good to go. Okay, and actually, you know what? I do want to show one more thing. Let me pull up. I'm going to link the form one more time just in case we've had a new, lot of new people show up. Okay, that sounds good. So one more thing I wanted to point out is um, up here above the articles, the article reading level. So it automatically defaults to reading level one since we're in the elementary version of Britannica. But if you um, had some upper level readers, you wanted to provide some differentiation, you could click on level two and it will automatically bring up the middle school version of this. So it's at more of a middle school reading level. Let's see, and off to the side, you'll see um, this Google Classroom and Google Drive. Um, it's really nice that they built this in because it makes it really easy to um, automatically share that to Google Classroom. But when we do that, just be aware that it shares the link with them. So let's see, I'm gonna show you what it looks like. So if I wanted to create an assignment, I'm going to name it solar system. And you'll see that it's, it's the link that is being posted. So as long as they have the password and um, you know your students have um, internet capability, then that is fine to do, but just be aware it's not the information itself. So if you do uh, want to share the information, like the article, you can do that using Google Drive. So when I come to Drive and sign in, then it will create in your Drive a, a folder. Oh, take in a second. Jeannie Philbrook just asked if you can do that step again. Sure. The sure um, which step, Jeannie? The Google Classroom? The step where you went into Google Classroom. I couldn't, the screen is so tiny that I just couldn't see where you were actually doing it. Gotcha. So yeah, if you come off to the side and click on share to Google Classroom, all it does is pull up your Google Classroom, like with the link pretty much saved. So you would choose the class that you want to save it to and then choose the action. So you know, just like you're creating anything else in Classroom, you can just choose whether you want it to be assignment, question, announcement, or material. And for this example, I just chose assignment. And then you can um, create a title and instruction. So you could say, you know, read this article on the solar system and um, answer these, these questions and um, hit assign. Or you could even include like a Google Doc with the assignments um, as well. That way they could go ahead and answer them there. But, um, but yeah, I was just pointing out that what it will do is it will link the, the, the link itself rather than the article. So um, just make sure, I think with the upper level students, that is absolutely fine. Most of the upper level students can click on a link. Um, the passwords usually you can save um, and they can navigate directly to Wise Owl. But with um, K2, especially if you haven't done it before, I would recommend um, saving to your Google Drive instead. And did it, let's see, there it is. Okay, so you'll see before I did not have this um, folder with Britannica as the label, but it went ahead and created that for me. My Chromebook's moving a little slow, there we go. And this actually does um, put it all in a Google Doc form. So I think with um, your younger students, or if it's just your preference, um, this is this might be a little bit easier. You could actually just um, connect the Google Doc to your Google Classroom, and they would have the information right here. They wouldn't have to enter the password or go to the, the site itself. They would just have the information available. Is there a generic password? Say, um, I teach fourth and fifth, so mm -hmm. would yep. there be a generic password? Yes, and um, the password for all of these databases is Wise Owl 19. Good to so know. Good. Thank you. Wise Owl 19. Yep, and it's all um, all one word. Okay. 
So let me close some of these out a little, make it a little bit cleaner to see. Okay. So now I'm going to go back to the main page. Um, and again, this, these are a few more of the elementary options. You'll see some of them um, are duplicated across middle and high school. Some of them are unique just to um, that age group. All right, now we're going to travel over to middle school. Again, you'll see some of them are the same, whereas some of them um, are more geared towards the older ages. So you'll see some of these in high school as well. So I want to bring your attention to the middle of the screen. You'll see this EBSCO discovery service. So this is really helpful for when students are um, just starting a research project to kind of get like an overview of what they're looking for. So for example, if I'm doing research on George Washington and hit search, this will search all of the different databases at once. So instead of having to go into each of the different databases and searching to see what information is available, this will show you all of them. So you'll see here um, this article from this, actually, I think that's an ebook um, on George Washington. Yep, there we go. This ebook on George Washington is in the primary search reference ebook collection. Here, this one is in history reference ebook collection, Funk and Wagnall's New World Encyclopedia. Um, so it'll kind of give you an idea of what databases you might want to go and search further. You also can limit um, your results over here on the side. So if you're looking specifically for magazine articles, you can look and see what, um, what databases are best for that. Um, but overall, you'll see here up, up at the top, there are 177,000 um, results. So obviously that's not a manageable number of um, different resources to look through um, and probably a pretty overwhelming for students. So um, I wanted to show you that that it's here and you know I can see some different um, applications that you can use this for, but um, probably not something I would show to, to uh, for students to use strictly um, for their research. But now we're going to look at and change gears a little bit from research to ebooks. So when I click on the ebook collection, It'll bring um, these three databases up, which all have um, a pretty good number of ebooks between them. So there's a high school version of this as well. We're going to look at the K8 collection. All right, and when we look at the home page, there's um, certain titles that are highlighted. These change pretty periodically. And then we also have featured ebooks that are um, separated by topic. I don't know what algorithm they use for the featured and the highlighted um, materials, but um, but yeah, it'll give you an idea of what kind of um, titles that they have. And then off on the left hand side, you can see all of the different categories that you can browse by. So if you're looking for a specific topic. Obviously, you can come up here and do a search for it. You can use the drop down to look for title, author, subject, and so on. But we're going to look at some science materials. And you'll see the very first result is actually um, for educators. So um, just something to note that these um, ebooks are both for students and um, professional development. So if you're looking for professional development, definitely um, recommend checking this database out. We're going to look at this title here on photosynthesis. So when we click on the blue link, it will give an overview of what the book is about. It also will tell you the publisher permissions. Um, so for this title, it says that we can print, email, and save up to 100 pages, and we have unlimited copy and paste, um, which is really helpful. This title is only 32 pages, so obviously we can use this entire um, book 
to share with our students. You'll also see this concurrent user level. So this is showing that we can, if we wanted to, we could have um, every single one of our students come and access this material at the same time. It's not like, you know, a library book where only one person can use it at the same time. Everybody could access this simultaneously if you wanted, um, wanted them to do that. You'll see that there's an option for full download. Um, it gets really wonky when you download to Chromebooks in particular, so I would not recommend using that option um, since we're primarily using Chromebooks. I suggest using this PDF full text. So we're going to click on that. And it will pull it up in this window right here. You'll see over here on the left hand side, it's that same information we saw earlier and then um, the different pages um, by chapter. So if we wanted to jump to one of those, obviously we could we could do that. We can adjust um, the view a little bit. So I'm going to shrink it down so we can see the pages a little bit easier. And so if you wanted to, you could um, go ahead and same idea as earlier, go ahead and link this link in Google Classroom. So if I could click on Google Classroom, it's going to be the same thing. Um, it'll go ahead and share it directly there, but it's going to be sending students to this link right here so that they'll see the screen. If you share it to your Google Drive, again, it makes it a little bit easier to um, manipulate. So when I share it to Google Drive, here, I'll show you what that looks like. Again, it's reminding us that we can only share up to 100 pages at a time. And then it's asking me, do I just want to share or send this current page? Do I want to just send this section or chapter? Or you can choose to share the whole thing. So I'm going to send all 32 pages. Click on Export. It wants me to log in. And then I'll show you what it looks like in, in Drive. Because again, upper level students, it, you know, they could probably handle just accessing the link pretty easily. Let's see. So the folder um, for this, because it's an EBSCO, EBSCO database, it's called EBSCO. Now you'll see when I pull it up, it's a really nice um, PDF version of this entire title. And so if you wanted to, you could um, download it and upload, like download to your device, or you could probably link it directly to Google Classroom. Um, but you could actually just put the entire PDF on Classroom for your students. That way, all they would have to do is double click on that file and they would be able to see the PDF like this. Um, but those are your options for sharing there. Um, let's see. You can also search within the title. So if you wanted specific information on sunlight, if that was what your lesson was focusing on, it'll show you exactly where to find that and you can jump to that section. So if this was, you know, a longer textbook on a certain topic, um, again, for upper level students, I think this would be really helpful um, to show students. It probably probably would be more helpful to um, have them link to this page where they can use some of these um, search tools a little bit um, easier. Okay. This has taken a while to come up, so we're going to go ahead and hit back to go back to my main page. And since it's um, pausing a second, Candy, do I have any other um, questions? You are good to go, my dear. Okay. So there's one more function I wanted to show you. in our K-8 collection. There we go. 
So you can also browse by language. So if I come over here to the fiction collection, I can come here and click on language and you'll see that there are 35 Spanish titles. Um, so if I have ESL students, um, I know 35 isn't like a giant number, but it does give us um, a few options that we can look at to share with them as well. Um, so I did want to point that out. Okay, so moving on, we are now going to go, go to the high school level. And if you guys have used um, NCYSL before, they used to have a um, navigation bar like right around here. That made it a little bit easier to navigate between them, but um, it's still fairly easy. You just have to go back to the home page to, to get to where you want to go. Okay, so again, we see Britannica, we see EBSCO eBooks. Uh, both of those are familiar now. Um, one thing that I wanted to point out is um, they recently removed the Gale um, resources from NC Wise Owl. So if you um, used those and are wondering where they went, um, they did discontinue those um, within the past like two weeks or so. So I did want to point, um, point that out. Let's see. Next, we are going to go to the Literary Reference Center. So when we look at the main page, again, we've got a carousel of some of the more popular um, titles that are used. But we're going to look over here at our full text classics. So I really wanted to find um, titles that you can share with students that don't have any, or at least very many limitations. Um, I know doing like whole book learning is a little bit more difficult in this um, setting. So I really wanted to show you some of the options that we have for that. So you can obviously search for a specific title right here if you wanted to do that. You can browse. Um, it's set to go in alphabetical order, but you can also look by genre or locale. Let's see. And I'm going to come down to the epic category and you'll see some of the titles that are available. So we're going to look a little bit closer at the Odyssey. If you click on the title itself, it will um, give you an essay about the Odyssey. So if you wanted to share that with students uh, before you started reading that, you know, that's an option. But I'm going to come down here and click on this full text classic because this is how I get to the actual title itself. And you'll see all of the results um, are split up by chapters. And it's not in chronological order, which I don't quite understand why. It's probably in alphabetical. Um, but I'm going to come here to book one. Again, it can give you a little bit of information about it. And I'm going to come over here to PDF full text. You'll see that you can share um, to Google Drive and Google Classroom. Those options are there. But if you do that, it is only going to share um, that little um, description of chapter one. So you want to make sure you click on PDF full text before you try to share any of that information. So same idea. You can click on Google Classroom and it will provide a link to this page right here. Or you are supposed to be able to go to Google Drive, but for whatever reason, I'm going to show you what pops up when I do that. It tells me that your document failed to be saved to your Google Drive account. I think this is just something glitchy that's happening right now. I'm not quite sure why it's um, failing to do so. You might, it might be something with my account. So if you want to try it and just see if it works, um, I encourage you to do that. But there is a workaround. So if you come here to download, you can download the PDF to your, to your computer and then just upload it to your Google Drive. So I did that earlier just to save a little bit of time. Oops, I don't want that version. When you open it as a PDF, um, you can then choose to open it as a Google Doc. 
And I did that just to kind of give you some ideas of um, how you can work with it. It gives you a little bit more flexibility um, in a Google Doc. So for example, if there was a specific passage um, from this chapter that I wanted to highlight or specific vocabulary, um, I could use the highlight tool and um, point that out to students. So for example, highlight a passage and ask them to respond to it. So I'm going to highlight this passage right here and then use my comment feature to say, you know, what, what is the author trying to tell us in this passage? Um, and then you could either, if you were working with like small groups, you could have all of them respond on the same document if you wanted to. That way they could have, um, you know, some discussion back and forth. Or obviously if you were, um, if you were doing a larger group, you could have each of them make a copy of the document to um, respond to individually as well. Um, you could also, I saw an idea where if you have discussion questions, so for example, you have three discussion questions that you want students to, to respond to and you want them to provide evidence from the text and say discussion question one, um, you told them to use blue. Then I could come up here and use the highlight feature or the text feature. Wow. Let's use yellow. It makes it a little bit easier to read. Um, and you could say, oh, here's my evidence for discussion question one. They have their um, reply and then they provide um, the evidence that they use to answer that question and say, you know, discussion question two could be in pink and so on. So um, just wanted to throw a few ideas for how you can use Google Docs, um, some of the features in Google Docs with these um, full text um, versions of the documents. And I will say, even though the uh, results display was a little wonky, they do give you all of the different chapters in order. So I suggest if you did want to use all of the chapters, you can um, use this feature over here to the side to browse around and it makes it a little bit more easier. Um, so you could download all of them at one time if you wanted to. Okay. So I'm going to go back to my results list, back to my home page. So if you wanted to, you know, if you weren't searching for a full text um, of a title, you can search um, by authors. They have um, different information. For example, um, like critical analysis of the works as well as the authors. They also have images off to the side. So if you wanted to um, share any of that information as supplementary to go with it on your Google Classroom, you would share those in the same way. So if I click on the image, I have these same options off to the right hand side. And then the information here at the bottom. Okay, let's see. Any questions about Literary Reference Center? Alrighty, so we are going to switch gears a little bit from more of like the ELA focus to social studies. And we're gonna look at NCpedia. All right, and it looks like we're going to have to go to the subjects for that. So I click on resources by subject, and actually let me show you how to access that from the home menu as well. So here's our home page. You can also access it here by going to by subject. And here we see North Carolina resources. Okay, and I'm going to click on NCpedia. And so this, um, this database is supported and staffed by librarians at the Government and Heritage Library um, through the State Library of North Carolina. And you can see this digital textbook. This is another great resource um, for middle and high school students. 
for um, some primary resources as well as um, things that you can um, download to post on Google Classroom. So I'm going to choose, let's see, should I go Colonial North Carolina? And we're going to choose the Tuscarora War. And you can kind of see it, it builds. Um, so again, thinking of these as chapters and then like subtopics within the chapter. And um, I pulled this up just to kind of show you the different options that are available once you get in it. So here is an overview here in the middle of the Tuscarora War in North Carolina. Off to the side, um, you can choose to read more about different people that were involved, the site of the war, related topics, and then down here we've got artifacts. So here's a map as well as a clipping from um, a letter. So let's click on that. You can see it provides a transcription as well as the image itself. So um, again, this is just one example um, of the different primary resources that are available within this um, anchor text. But it's something that if this is um, something that you teach, I definitely recommend um, checking out to, to see, uh, see what you can use with your students because it has lots of different information. Let's see. We also have This Day in North Carolina History um, and then featured content as well. I want to say, I think, oh, here we go. Up here under the educators, that's what I was looking for. So if we click on educators, there's a little bit more information. So again, this is um, geared towards eighth grade and up but they do have um, some resources for K-7. So I encourage you to check that out as well. And then here's um, more on their primary source collections. So these are actually located on other websites. These are not part of um, the NCpedia collection, but they are some fantastic resources. Um, I did a another um, section on NC Wise Owl where I went over some of the different um, resources that are available here. So if this is a topic that you're interested in, especially looking for primary resources, I definitely recommend um, checking out the uh, level two version of NC Wise Owl and um, that are just coming in and poking around and seeing what's available here because there's some fantastic information all collected in this one spot. Um, so it might even be a good idea to just bookmark it and then you can come and um, browse around when, whenever you get a chance. So I did want to just give you guys a little bit of information on this NCpedia um, just because it's one of the, I like that it's specifically geared towards North Carolina um, and that's something that we might have trouble finding otherwise. Um, so again, if that's the topic you're looking for, I'd highly recommend it. Okay, so now we're gonna look at a few professional resources that are available. We're gonna come here to, for educators. And I wanna show you this PBS Learning. So I like that you can actually find um, videos here that you could share with your students. So you can browse based on the level that you're teaching. So I'm going to come here to early elementary. And you'll see these are all PBS videos. They're all really short. Um, you know, this one right here is 55 seconds long. This one's 45 seconds. Um, so you'll see at the top, we've got information specifically on um, talking about the coronavirus with our young people, which um, I definitely think could be used in our first few weeks back. 
Uh, we also have, there's interactive lessons that you could assign for them to um, kind of walk through the information and that it actually has like questions that they answer as they go through it. But it's really neat to just kind of browse through that or if you're looking for something specific, you can always come up um, to the search and look. Let's see. Let's actually go here by subject. And if we come to reading foundational skills, just as an example. You'll see that they have um, some very specific topics that you could share as well. And these are all um, copyright free. So because uh, we pay for, well, the state pays for us to use um, these databases, you're actually able to go in and download and share these again on your Google Classroom. So let's click on this one so I can show you what that would look like. Okay, so if I decided I wanted to, to share this video I would come to share to Google Classroom. And again, I would choose my class, create an assignment, title, just put example. Oops. Oh, did it disappear already? I think it did. Um, but again, it would, it would um, share the link to get to this page. So if they clicked on it, it would um, bring this link up and it would display exactly like, like you see it here. Crystal Shelley just asked, where is the PBS media located on Wise Owl? Cause she missed the navigation. It is under um, for educators. Great question. And if we come down here at the bottom, you can actually look at the, the resources as well. Oh, I think it's gonna make me sign in. Um, I'm not gonna take the time to do that, but let's see. If you do, you can see the um, North Carolina standards, but you can see down here what it looks like. You can see the Common Core standards that it meets and so on. And I believe you can actually browse, yes, by those standards. So if you're like, oh, this is great, it's meeting the standard, can I get other videos that also meet the standard? You can. So some standard searches are, are a little difficult to navigate, um, but I do think these are a little bit user friendly, the PBS ones. So if you're on the home page, I just clicked on the standards box up here at the top. And you can choose what standard you're looking for. Let's see. Over here to content standards. And then, so say I'm looking for, let's look for third grade. If you wanted to type in keywords that you're looking for, you can, but we're just gonna browse. And you can see what's available. So, Let's look at reading and notating music. Oh no, and there's zero search results. So that's entirely possible. <laughs> but you get the idea. Um, it makes it pretty easy to find, um, if you want to tie something into a lesson that you're working on, a video to go along with it. Um, and obviously, if you sign in, you can have um, a little bit more visibility and seeing those state standards as well. Um, but yeah, so that is PBS Learning Media, which again, I recommend for um, using copyright safe videos. All right, and we've got a few more minutes. So I do want to bring um, your attention to this NC Kids Digital Library. So NC Kids and NC Live, these are two databases that students have to have a public library card in order to access. So um, I definitely, if you're going to use these in your classroom, um, I would make sure that students have that um, option that, that they can get a library card in order um, to access these. But this 
currently the Courage Book Public Libraries are allowing parents to call in and um, get a library card that they can use to access these digital materials without coming in. So from what I understand, even if they have like overdue fees or anything like that, if they just want to access the digital resources, they are able to do that. They just got to call and get the number. You put the number in, you put a PIN number in, and um, you have access to, oh, I don't remember the number. I want to say it's like 20,000 um, ebooks just on this NC Kids Digital Library alone. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. You can view a lot of these on a Chromebook. Some of them are Kindle only, um, but if they say EPUB, that means that they're viewable on a Chromebook. So let's take a look at this one as an example. So if you click on the title, if it's in blue and says borrow, that means that you can borrow it. You would just click on that. Um, let's see. Okay, over here are the different formats are, that are available. So if it says Kindle book, that means that they have to have a Kindle, um, like a Kindle reader in order to, to use that material. But you can um, filter. Let's see. If we go over here to collections, I go under ebooks and see all. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. I'm trying to remember how to how to filter um, specifically for EPUB. Oh, I'll have to check on that. Um, so if you're interested in this, shoot me an email and I can work with you to um, show you how to filter specifically for um, EPUB so that they can view it on their on their Chromebooks if this is something that you want to use in class. If not, um, it's just something that you can share with students if they have any Kindle um, readers or a lot of phones obviously have the, the Kindle app on there. They're able to get these phone, get these ebooks on their phones um, as well to access. I know I use I use mine on my phone all the time, um, but it's a it's a great resource. Um, especially right now when students aren't able to access their classroom libraries and um, their school libraries like they normally are. Um, I think it's something that we should be sharing with students just to make sure they know it's available, if nothing else. Okay, so before we run out of time, um, if there's any questions on any of the NC Wise Owl resources in general, I would be happy to answer those. And just um, in general, if there's a database that um, is more like specific for your content area that I did not cover, um, feel free to reach out to me. I'll put my email as kaylancaster um, at currytalk.nc.k12.us. Um, I'll put it in the chat box too. So yeah, if there's something that you're just unsure of, you want to know um, what your options are and how you can use it with students, especially virtually, feel free to reach out and I can share that information with you as well. Okay, so if there's not any questions, um, I just wanna thank everybody for spending your time um, with us today and learning a little bit about NC Wise Owl and um, hopefully you learned something new, so thank you. That was wonderful. That was wonderful. You had 48 people. 50. Oh, that's awesome. 50. Yay. <laughs> yes. And you actually, I don't know if it counted it, but you had two people that um, were uh -oh, in, in a room with that. someone watching it. So I added them to the list. I didn't you. see Mary Ann, but Mary Ann joined. I, did, I missed her. She just back. I didn't catch her. Are you still recording? Who's recording? Um, I'm still recording. Mary Ann. Um, I just saw her leave. Mary Ann Doyle. Yeah, I saw her name too. Mm -hmm. But she didn't. But but it didn't pop up. I don't think. I I um. 
I went in and shared the, um, here, I'll stop recording now. I went in and shared the um, document.